I am James Swanick, and today we are talking to a lovely couple in the southwest of England, Warren and Catalina. And Warren uh, is a business owner. In fact, he has two businesses uh, in the medical industry and an online uh, training course. Uh, and Catty uh, is a carer who works with elderly people. They're based uh, in a place called the Cotswolds near Bath in southwest England. They have two grown-up daughters, uh, one of whom lives with them and the other has her own place. And Warren joined us in our Project 90 program, which helps folks quit alcohol. And he's currently 115 days alcohol-free. And his uh, lovely partner, Catalina, is 330 days alcohol-free. And, and she was able to do that on her own. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, their relationship with alcohol and then their relationship to each other and with to their children um, and the role that alcohol played and the role that the role that removing alcohol played. So Warren and Catty, welcome. So great to have you here. Thank you, yeah, thank James. You. So Warren, I might just start with you. Um, just tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, yourself and you and Catty and what you do and your relationship with alcohol. And we'll start there. Um, well, I, I, I spent most of my career in the medical and pharmaceutical industry. Um, up until about 2015, I worked for a, a lot of the multinational companies. Uh, and I, I kind of always had this burning desire to, to set up a company on my own, which, which I managed to do in 2015. Um, so I set up a training and consultancy company. Um, and I just basically had enough of that, the kind of corporate life. And, and I was on that ladder of going up and, you know, into the kind of national and international jobs, no time at home. Um, so I missed the family, etc. cetera. Um, but all the way through our journey, if you like, since we, since we were married, um, Cathy's from Spain. So, so really straight, you know, from the, from the point that we got, married um kind of alcohol was around because it's it's kind of embedded in the culture in spain um so you know i was you know i was, I was conscious when i went over there it would be kind of vermouth before the meal you know red or white wine during dinner and maybe then then kind of liqueurs with coffee and it and it was kind of we we fell into that culture it's a beautiful culture but we we kind of fell into that when we got married um, didn't we really and, yeah. and, and we we continued that into the into our life in the UK if you like so so alcohol was always with us from from the beginning really from the the point that we got together. Katty tell me a little bit about the the drinking culture from your Spanish background did Warren uh, articulate that pretty well I just tell us a little bit about the yeah, very, very drinking well. culture in Spain. Yeah, yeah. The fact is I grow up with it because mum and dad always had it on the table with uh, water and chiffon. Um, we always uh, had it uh, on the table. And for me, it was something very natural to have. Uh, but then as we get, get older and go out with the friends, always was uh, something natural for me just to ask a glass of wine. And uh, since then, always, anywhere I had to go, I had to just have the wine with me, nothing else. No, no spirits, no vodkas, no jeans, nothing, only wine. And uh, that's been continued since we uh, got together, married, and, uh, but it, it was a disaster, basically. I could not drink because I had a, a major operation as well. I have an aneurysm, my brain, I have blood coming down, and I remember uh, he and my brother taking me into into the hospital and I had uh, to have an operation to block the vein in my head. And um, they give me the, the tablets, I'm on medication now. And um, I could not drink with that at all. But I, I ignore it and I continue drinking my wine because I want it so badly. Uh, but then I had um, uh, a seizure. I had, uh, uh, the first one I had, I can't remember, but uh, the, they told me not to drink anymore, nothing at all. But I just continued the same. I thought for me it was something normal and um, made me feel comfortable with Warren having together a nice evening with another glass of wine. 
not to know that. You know, I was hiding my bottles away so nobody could, could see what I was doing. And um, um, that hurt me because uh, I, I felt like in the world on my own with, with wine. And I couldn't understand why I just did it. And then I had another seizure. And that, that one I remember very well about a year ago, now in December. And I felt like I was just going. I saw myself with the legs up in the air. And I thought, that's it, I'm there. And I saw it. I saw it and I remember that one very well. And since that happened, I said, not anymore. Do any wine or any alcohol whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to live without that and start being born again. And that's how I feel now. I feel like I'm coming from another world, uh, surrounded by the people that I love, I care. And uh, that's why I probably I'm into the care home because God sent me there. Well, I believe in myself, really. And I love what I'm doing. And I love my family, friends and everybody. Even meeting you now, <laughs> I made me happy. <laughs> yes, it's been uh, a, a challenge, but a good challenge. Yeah, very good. Well, I should say, first of all, congratulations on, on being 330 days alcohol-free right now on your own, which is incredible, and long may it continue. And I'm so glad that your um, health concerns have seemingly um, reduced since then. Um, I'm so curious, despite having the aneurysms and despite doctor's advice um, not to drink, you still chose to drink. Why do you mm -hmm. think that was? Um, I just uh, have it habit and I thought I could not live without it um, but I, I saw and you know you've just proven that everything is possible you can do you can choose how you want to live with who you want to live and what kind of life you want to live I believe it and it's true it's true it's true it's, uh, it's just an habit now we love the soda water to drink in night time <laughs> with different flavors <laughs> and it is great <laughs> yeah and Warren what was it describe the experience for you seeing Catty go through that um well I mean it was it it, it was frightening really um but y you know it was the, the guidance that we got was was quite mixed you know from the from the medical community um, you know, even to the point where where they were, well, you know, a, a glass of wine here and there wouldn't really hurt, and and it's it's obviously a, a massive no no, you, you, you know, and and um, and and I think it was just a it was just we were in a rut if you like we 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 were in that pattern of life that 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 kind of alcohol was on the journey with us. Um, and 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 it, and other areas of our life and our and our marriage were, were suffering because of that. You know, it was a constant day in day out thing. Um, and, and as Katie said, I mean, even after such a massive event like that, um, and 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 getting the side effects of that, which were epilepsy. We, you know, we 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 both because I you know I don't want to put it on Katie because it was both of us. You know, we both continued with with the habit. Um, you know, which is crazy, really, if you think about it. Um, especially with my background in the in the medical. You know, I'm I'm originally a clinician. You know, so it's, it's crazy. Um, Do you think that that demonstrates just how? I wouldn't say addictive the substance is, but maybe addictive the habit is. The cultural conditioning that alcohol is just normal, that it's okay, that even despite evidence from doctors and medical advice to the contrary, you were just like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's prevalent everywhere. This is just normal. It's something we can enjoy together. Like, Do, do you think that it was a, a habitual addiction or do you think it was a chemical addiction? I, th I For me personally, I think it was a habit because there were periods where I went like for example, I did a thirty-day period where I where I didn't drink, and then I, and then there was you know there there are sometimes these charity events in the in the UK where you go for a month, uh, and you donate all the money you collect to to maybe a cancer charity charity or a children's charity, and I've done those events before, so 
and, and without too much difficulty. I think we were just in exactly, as I said, really a rut. Um, and also the pressures because, you know, things like um, events like weddings and, and, and birthdays and those, the pressure that you come under during those events, um, even if you say, well, look, you know, we've got this medical problem and, and some people really still put you under pressure, I, I found. You know, I found there was a, there's a whole load of pressure around those kind of events. Yeah, Cathy, did you, what do you think? Why do you think that you were still drinking despite the, the medical issues that you were having? Do you think it was a chemical addiction or a habitual cultural addiction that you had? Um, but from a start, it really, really from the very beginning was the culture that I thought it was, was normal to have it on the table. Uh, but then it just became really, I felt like I could not live without it. If you call it an, a proper addiction to it, it is. Yeah. Yes. And uh, um, after all, what, we know what happened after being well together, got my 30 years. Um, and I had it more than that because for my when I was teenager as well, it's a uh, it's, it's, it's a proper proper addiction I would say. It's mm. you cannot break it if you gotta really really set a goal in your mind to to stop and um, and take it. You no, know, see everybody drinking. It's not a problem for me. No, could see it anywhere. Go to supermarkets or people um, promoting alcohol, but it's not touching my brain at all anymore. So what type of strain did this put on the relationship um, with each other in your marriage? And what strain, if any, did it put on your relationship with, with either, of, either of your two daughters? Um, it huge. It put a huge strain on our on our marriage because, as you can imagine, um, you know if you if you if you're drinking and you're also on medication, then you know the effects of alcohol without medication on some people are pretty bad. But if you're also on medication, it, it, it compounds the issue. So it was like for me, it was like living with two different people. So the the person in the daytime was was you know the, the you know the woman i fell in love with 30 years ago and and you know all, we had all those the behaviors and and the relationship we had um you know when we first got married in the daytime but then uh, the, then you it, cause for us it was always the evening it wasn't any daytime but then in the evening it was like living with a different person really um so very strange and and, and obviously the same for my daughters really you know and sometimes if i was traveling um with work or something or I was away on a conference or something you know I would probably I would get a kind of a phone call that would say oh mom's being weird again so it was basically the alcohol and and and, and drugs kicking in making you becoming you know a different if you like your personality was slightly different how was her personality slightly different what would you say uh, yeah. yes yeah it just um it, it just changed I, I just if, honestly, I could say it changed because I could feel it changing myself. It's it, it, I just was around the, uh, it, it, I don't know how to explain it. It's so so uh, um, kind of a powerful that I thought it was so important for my body to have it that I could not live without it. It was it was odd so, behaviors changed yeah, really. It was yeah. just just odd odd behaviors would would kick in. Um, even to the fact of, uh, you know, even down to food, you know, the types of food. Cassie's always had a very healthy diet uh, and always been very health conscious. But if if she if she'd been maybe having an extra glass of wine too many, she would go and eat a pizza. It was it was odd, you, you know. It's really really odd. Yeah. Um, but if you chatted to her the next morning about it and you said, oh, you know, you know, you were a bit odd and, you know, you went and ate a pizza, she was horrified. So there was obviously, there was obviously, a, um, you know, some memory loss because of that. Um, so it affected all of our life, really, all of the whole of our married life, really. And how did your daughters say that it affected 
their relationship with both of you? Um, well, they became, both of them had had anxiety problems um, mm. to the extent that my older daughter was, was kind of had treatment for it. Um, and, and I, I, you know, maybe wasn't, you know, all of the cause of that, but it was one of the contributing factors um, to having anxiety. Um, my younger daughter was was kind of more withdrawn than than my older daughter. She was, you know, she would be quite um, tearful and, and get upset, whereas my younger daughter would go into a shell if you know when these when these occasions happened. Um, so it was two different, completely different reactions, but both were affected by it. Mm. And so Katty then finally, in it sounds like in December 2019, after uh, her latest health scare, made a decision to go alcohol free. And to this day, she remains alcohol free. Uh, so what? two questions. Katty, what was the experience like for you finally choosing to be alcohol free? What were those first few months like when you were not drinking? And then secondly, as I understand it, Warren, despite Cassie deciding to quit alcohol, you decided to continue drinking. So I'm just curious as to how that played out. So let me let me just address the first question to Cathy. What were those first few months alcohol-free like for you? Uh, I, I felt really, really good. I thought it would feel different and strange how, and would miss it. But the decision that I took is just, the power that uh, what, uh, what I saw happening in that day when I fell down the stairs and I saw myself dying, going somewhere else uh, and leaving everything behind me, it stopped me from touching it, but I'm not scared of it all. Oh. And I've been living all this month, like you say, after stopping, um, very, very happy, very happy, not driving, just walking and walking and taking the dog, dog, dog out and focus on the house. And uh, um, it's just kind of, uh, I would say, being kind of a born again. And uh, because I quite used to lose the memory. Um, now, when I work now in the home, I had to take a notepad and write down every single day what I was doing, where I was going and who I was going to visit. And uh, now it's just automatically it's in my head. It's like you're learning again how to live your life. Um, but it's not touching me anymore. In the, since, since the beginning, when I say no more, it's just for me just natural. I didn't look back two seconds to have a glass of wine or nothing, nothing at all. It seems like weird and, you know, saying it should be something else, but... It's not, it's just as simple as that. Have a glass of water instead of having a glass of wine. <laughs> it's just unbelievable, but I just feel it's just so normal. And I feel normal again, thank God. Yeah. And Warren, despite Cassie feeling normal again and feeling reborn, you still chose to drink alcohol. So tell me a little bit about why you chose to do that and what impact that had yeah I, I think for for me uh, you know I was, I was i was very impressed with catty you know what she what she'd done but i was still in that rut uh and i continued to be in that rut for six months whilst catty was alcohol free uh, i think some of that was probably to do with stresses of setting in you know managing and setting up businesses etc and it was it well, I know it was my release from it, um, but I was in I was in a pattern. So, you know, I would I would more or less buy the alcohol at the same time every day. You know, early evening. You know, I would I would come home, and whereas in the in the past we maybe would have shared a bottle of wine, I was working my way way through that bottle of wine on my own, um, and it got me to the point, and it was during lockdown really. Uh, that 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 it compounded really. It got, it got worse during lockdown because obviously, you know, the the pattern of life changed. Um, the only thing you were really allowed to do here was to go to the store, 
Um, so it was very easy for me to go to the store at the end of the working day and grab a bottle. It was usually a bottle of wine or, or maybe, you know, um, four beers or, or, or whatever. Um, but also, but I, I felt it was disrespectful as well to Cathy. Do, do you know what I mean? Because she would, she'd gone through all this huge battle with with her health and illness uh, and then the struggle with with the habit of drinking and I was continuing so obviously it didn't have a great effect on our marriage for six months um we were almost living separate lives um so even though you you felt like it was disrespectful to Catty you still continued to drink yeah, I think I think I was just in a pattern. It was a, it was a pattern of behaviour, definitely a pattern of behaviour that I was in. And and if you stop me, I think I said this to Kevin on one of the calls. If you stop me on the way to the store and 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 ask me why I was doing that, I, I probably couldn't give you an answer. Um, it was it was because I'd always done it for the last you know 10, 20 years, uh, and I was just in that pattern of behavior um and that was that was one of the th first things i saw catty change was she changed her pattern so instead of opening a bottle of wine she would she would open uh, soda water or, or or a perrier water or um so i when when i started with uh, project 90 uh, and and you started talking about that for me, it, it was fairly easy to change that behavior because I just got into a different pattern and I followed the, the, the pattern of life that Cathy would had for the last six months. Um, and and, and I, I, I think I said on some of the calls that, that, you know, for me, because my partner was alcohol free, it was a massive advantage for me. Um, and, and it made the, those early weeks where, it, you know, where the change in behavior you're struggling with, it made it easier for me. Mm. Uh, Cathy, how did you feel about Warren continuing to drink after you had made the choice not to? Uh, but to say the truth is I put a mind. I didn't mind at all because uh, I recognised that was uh, my trouble, my problem because I could not drink it. I could not touch it because, and, and with the tablets, uh, I could not do it anymore. And I, I didn't mind at all if you wanted to have a, a glass or, or I thought a bottle would be too much, but uh, I didn't mind. I knew that uh, if I continued drinking, uh, uh, would stop our marriage, our life together, even separation, I would have to go back to where I come from, that I love it, but... Um, I was so my life is with him and my daughter, so uh, um, I really, really had to touch that wine, uh, stop it, no more, no more drinking because uh, it doesn't help. There's no help. So Warren, just describe for me the moment where you maybe first became aware of my organization, the Alcohol Free Lifestyle and Project 90, uh, and then, you know, how long it was before you decided to take action? You know, was there a, um, a catalyst moment or was it the, the, you know, the accumulation of six months of thinking about it before you finally uh, enrolled and did something about it? Just talk us through a little bit about that leading up to the moment where you finally said, okay, I'm going to get this under control. I th I think from remembering back, I, I think it was around about August September, uh, twenty nineteen. I'd, I'd seen some of your uh, the information for for maybe the thirty day program first of all, and then and then Project Ninety on Facebook. Um, but and I knew in my own mind be, because I work in the health field, I knew that I was probably doing myself some damage with the level of alcohol that I was that I was drinking. Um, and so it's probably we were both drinking when I first saw um, some information on on your programs. Um, but I, I already knew deep inside me that I had to do something at that point. So I think we have email exchanges 
um, but it wasn't quite the right time for me. And I think it, what it took was, it took Catty to step forward um, and make that, to make, and that made me feel even worse, if you like, because I'd already, I already in my mind had, like this is, you know, this is kind of a road to nowhere. Um, and, and But when she stepped out and, and obviously, you know, I, I kind of thought, wow, you know, I never thought that she would do that. And she did it almost overnight, you know, in the, you know, over a few weeks, she just completely withdrew alcohol. Um, and, 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 and I found myself right, feeling kind of really bad about continuing. And, and, I, and I knew, and I think that's when I got to the point, maybe May of this year, during that lockdown where it was a, the pattern was even worse. I then got back in t contact with you. Um, and then I had a call with Roseanne. Um, but even at that point, um, I was on the fence. Um, Roseanne actually spoke to Cathy um, during that first call. Um, and I think that really just, helped uh, me. Just to give context, sorry to interrupt, just to give context, Roseanne is one of our former clients now in Rollers. Uh, yeah. And Roseanne speaks with um, uh, folks who are considering enrolling with us in our in our Project 90 program. Just wanted to give that context. Continue, Warren. Yeah. So, um, and I was I was really on the on the fence, you know, and I could have gone one way or the other. Um, but Roseanne spoke with so much conviction about her journey and and how she felt, and, and I wanted what where you know to be where she was, you know, during the call and how she'd explained to me. Uh, and I think I, she she reminded me on a call recently that I basically she said to me, well, you know, how do you feel, you know, about alcohol? And I said, look, I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, and it was the alcohol that was causing that. It was affecting my business. You know, I was, um, I mean, Cathy saw it really day to day. You know, I was I wasn't myself. I wasn't. I was anxious. You know if I had to do sales calls or I had a, a Zoom meeting with a client, I wasn't really myself. I was anxious. My planning of that, that event was quite poor. Um, and that's, that's what we've seen. You know, there's some of the differences we've seen, we've seen is that we've both got clarity in our lives, you know, and, and we can plan properly um, and prioritize. What did you think, Cathy, when Warren came to you and said, look, I'm entertaining the idea of joining this program to help me to get power over alcohol? Were you uh, sceptical? Were you encouraging, encouraged, I should say? Were you, um, you know, how did you feel about that when Warren came to you with that? No, very encouraging. I was really, really happy to hear, you know, that I was in contact, well, you know, with the, the whole lot, really. Even, even you know, promoting like uh, the books, some of the books that um, got in the hands now that I can't put it away. One of the is the Journey of Souls uh, book that I'm reading now through uh, what is Warren. So we've shared, we've, yeah. you know, some of the books that, yeah. that have been recommended. We've we've kind of shared the books. So so kind of, Cathy's been on the the B ninety journey with me, really, in the background. Yeah. So I've passed <laughs> some of the books over to her, etc. Um, mm. So it was it was good that you know that 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 we did this together, really, today, because she's been there constantly supporting mm. me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Cathy supported. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's, it's very very good. Um, because, uh, uh, and, and I see you sometimes as well, traveling, uh, showing pictures with the telephone. And uh, Me? What else? yeah, it was, you, yes, it was, you, it was you. I think, I think on Facebook, you may be yeah. seeing some of your, um, some, some of your short videos. James. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some of my yeah. marketing videos, some of my marketing videos, maybe. Yeah. 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 yeah but it's good. It's all, everything that you do all together is great helping lots of people. Thank you, Cathy. I appreciate that. Uh, so Cathy was in, she was very supportive of you enrolling with us in Project 90. But as I understand it, Warren, your accountant was someone that 
you still needed to go <laughs> and get the permission of before you enrolled in this program. So it's like some people are like, well, I better just check with my wife or I better check with my husband. But for you, it was, no, I better just check with my accountant. Yeah, yeah. Me, no, Kathy was, Kathy was on board, but my accountant wasn't. Um, but yeah, so he was, I think he, he thought I'd kind of lost the plot. <laughs> um and I and and the next call obviously the, the next call I had with Roseanne um I'd already decided the accountant you know he was <laughs> trying to be an accountant and 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 do you know do all, all the numbers etc and get them all to stack up and it, but in the end I, I had to do it not just for me for us um so I I just jumped in and, and went for it 150 percent uh I plugged into to all the system so for the whole 90 days, I, I did, I actually attended two calls a week and did the one-to-one -one with Kevin. So I, did, I didn't fail to get on, on any of those. Um, I also used Marco Polo um, and, 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 and learned from the people that were posting on there. Um, so, so the system got me through it. Um, but as I say, I, was, I felt fortunate that our situation at home, it was fairly easy to be alcohol free. Um, but yeah, yeah, we still had alcohol around. And my, my daughters still, you know, drink. They don't drink heavily, but there's alcohol in the house, so it's not as if we've banished it. Um, and it doesn't worry us that there's alcohol in the in the house, or or you go to the store. You know, we've kind of we've got a power over it, as you said earlier. Catty, what changes did you see in Warren after he had gone alcohol free consistently? Well, the change is one of the major ones is, is um, more focus, more focus on what he's doing every day. And uh, it's not kind of uh, like bushing around in the office, searching for things that he knew that he left somewhere on the table and he couldn't find it, but it was there. It's just uh, he knows what he's doing and that's great to see it. And uh, he's got a great mind on his shoulders, and I'm very proud of him and everything he does. And I'm glad I got married to him. <laughs> <laughs> I paid her for that, James. That, that cost me a lot of money. <laughs> no, it, it's good. We've been through kind of a journey that I believe when people say I could write a book about my life, because it's true, everybody's got their own book, their own life to, to write down, it's true. And Catty, uh, besides seeing the benefits for Warren and his life from being alcohol free, how has Warren being alcohol free benefited you, you and your life? How have you gained from Warren's new way of being? Yeah, lots of us sold the water bottles. <laughs> lots of soda water bottles. <laughs> In the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it just, I can see him, it's just uh, clear. And uh, one thing he used to do, um, and he, he maybe can't remember, uh, but he used to tell me things sometimes. He was annoying to me saying, oh, why do you do this and why do you do that? And... Just I was irritable. Him, like irritable. Yeah. And uh, his irritation, it was on me all the time, but in telling me why I was doing things. And uh, now he doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> it's just something that he just focuses on what he's got to do and is happy the rest of the time and is himself. So I found this very positive. I think I was irritable, James, with myself because I knew... Especially, especially in that six month period where Katty was alcohol free and I wasn't, I, I knew that what I needed to do. And I think I was irritable with myself. And then I took it out maybe on Katty and maybe the, maybe the girls and people around me because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin with the behaviors that I, that I had, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like uh, you were no longer irritable, which meant that Katty no longer had to be irritated with you being irritable. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, spot on, I would say. <laughs> he 
even though she said to me, Mom, is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> I was being nice for a day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patty, the, we have a, a number of folks who who are considering joining us in our Project 90 program, which helps folks uh, rewire their brain. And as Warren was saying there, change the pattern of behavior around alcohol. Uh, and a lot of folks have their husband or their wife uh, talk them out of doing it. Um, so this is an opportunity, I guess, for you to maybe speak to a husband or a wife or a spouse or an accountant, if it's if it's Warren's <laughs> case, to maybe just, uh, you know, maybe say to them what you think they should do, or maybe you talk to the husband or the wife or the spouse, you know, what message would you have for the partner of someone who is considering going through this process? What, what, what would I say to the partner? Yeah, the what would you say to the husband or the wife or the partner of someone who wants to quit alcohol, wants to come through the Project 90 process, but the partner is like, oh, I don't know about this. Don't worry, I'll just hold you accountable. You'll be fine. You can do this on your own. You don't need to do that. What might you say to those folks? Well, if if they believe they can do it on, on their own, uh, this is not an, an, an harm to try it because everything, like I said, is possible. You believe in yourself and why the things that haven't been going wrong, why not to try to post put them into a perspective and and try, deeply try if you can do it. And if you think you're going to fail, if you if you say, okay, I'll have a go and talk to these people and uh, I'll be in contact and I'll I'll try my best. I think I, I think I needed a system. Whereas Catty yeah. probably because of the scare with her health, that probably was her system. Do you, do you know what I mean? It was a it, 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 she had to do it she whereas with me I had a choice and, and 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 I think without the people around me in the in the group it would have been way tougher I, I'm sure I could have done it like Cathy said I think people do do it but I think the you're stacking the odds in your favor by by having p90 you you have that system as long as you use it I mean I'm sure there's people come in and don't use it you know you've got to use that system so that's what I did uh and I think I I, I don't think I could have done it without this without a, a system without wanting to you know sing the praises of the of the program too much obviously obviously it's been effective for you which is fantastic but what did you find really challenging about the program what 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 did you struggle with at times because it's not always sunshine and and rainbows uh, I, I say that uh, to folks who are considering joining us, sometimes folks feel like they're running through rose bushes and they're getting cut up and it's like it's, it hurts and it's prickly, but then they come out the other side and it's beautiful. But what was your kind of rose bush experience? Um, yeah. Obviously, things like the time zone is, is a challenge for, for anyone in Europe can, because obviously, you, you, you know, the, the majority of the calls can be a little bit later in in the, so you, you need to motivate yourself and be bothered to get on them um so that's one challenge i i found um sometimes with like marco polo although i although i'm involved in online courses i was really apprehensive about about my first post on there uh to the point where we had a discussion kevin and i had a discussion um and he said look you just you just got to go one take he called me one take warren so basically he said, you just got to go one, two, three, switch it on and record. So that's what I did. I just followed him. And just for context, for those who might be wondering what, what the heck we're talking about here when we say Marco Polo, Marco Polo is a little video messaging group that we have where members can communicate with each other via a video selfie. So think of it as a, as a Facebook group, except that rather than communicating with other members via the, the typed word, you're communicating via little video messages. Uh, many members um, uh, express a lot of resistance to recording themselves uh, initially right in the beginning, um, which is fair enough. It involves technology and a lot of people also 
um, want to feel like they're being private and confidential and they don't want their face or image or story to get out. Uh, however, what we found is that, well, first of all, it is private and confidential amongst the group. So it never gets out into the public. It's only uh, the only people who see those video selfies are those who are members. Um, and secondly, we found, um, in fact, neuroscience studies have shown that community and being and feeling connected to a community of like-minded people has a dramatic impact on someone's ability to have success. If you are trying to be a lone ranger, so to speak, or a lone wolf and do it on your own, it will often or mostly feel challenging. However, when you can see, really get to know other people, connect with other people and do that via little video selfies or being on a group call, then change not just becomes possible, it actually becomes probable. So please continue, Warren. I just wanted to create that context because I know we'd mentioned Marco Polo a few times and, and I suspect some yeah. some folks that didn't know what we were referring to, but continue. Yeah, that was really helpful. Um, and so, so, and that community, you know, keeps you on track if, if you use it because, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to step out of that community or you don't want to let down that community. That's that's the way you, you feel. You're letting down yourself, but you've also got accountability to the community because you start to build up, you know, a friendship group in there and, 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 and you, you know, you talk to people on the calls. Um, so the for me, the, the, um, the process of everything really helped me. Um, the early weeks you you've obviously get you get kind of fatigue a little bit in the first couple of weeks so that's that's a little bit unusual um but once you're through that as long as you stay um in contact with the people you need to be in contact with i've i found it re relatively straightforward um mm -hmm. and it definitely changed the way i the way i was thinking and the clarity and, and the way, you know, I run my life, if you like. Yeah, wonderful. Um, during the process, you wrote a letter to alcohol. Now, the contents of that, we don't, uh, we don't want to share here, uh, obviously, word for word. But maybe you might just explain a little bit about what, why you did that. You actually wrote a letter to alcohol. And without, you know, reading it out, obviously, what was the yeah. point of that? What was the benefit that you got from well, that? What I actually, what if you like, um, encouraged me to do it was I saw one of the other members um, post uh, a similar sort of letter and, and he, it seemed to, for him, it seemed to be kind of therapeutic um, and it was very strong. It was very moving when I, when I listened to it. it. It was via the app, you know, via the Marco Polo app and it was a video selfie um, and that made me think, but I wasn't quite ready for it when I saw that. From the other member um but it, it felt like uh, we had kind of um someone in our marriage with us and it was it was the alcohol so so i decided to to write to alcohol as if it was someone who lived with us um and it and it and it, and it, it really helped me personally to to lift the burden off my shoulders um so i i basically told told alcohol what what I thought of what it had, you know, the impact it, impact it had on our life and our marriage. Um, and at the end of it, it felt like I'd lifted a weight and I, I, need, I needed to send it to someone. So I, I sent it over to Kevin and Roseanne because I felt part, the, the final part of it was to share it with someone. Uh, so that's what I did. I, you know, I, I wrote that one Sunday evening during the P90. I sat down and wrote it um and sent it did you share it with catalina or did you keep it to yourself yeah we yeah i, I we shared it didn't we and uh yeah. it, it what was, was your reaction catty oh yes yes <laughs> it just um you stay in the truth basically being yourself and it was it was part of the marriage that it just like got this divorce now it's gone <laughs> we divorce the alcohol. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but it is something good, isn't it? That guy writing to it was like a chair, isn't it? He was talking to the chair and it was the, the alcohol. 
So it's, it's coming from deeply from the inside, what you say and what you write in. And they set your mind free. You have put your, yourself then. Why not to be the person you are born to be? It's true if, uh, if everybody can, can help each other by this, um, these tokens, is really, really positive for the whole world. Hmm. Yes, and I wouldn't mind to share um, anything, you know, that happened in our lives with other people if, if it helps somebody mm. else. Yeah. Just a couple further questions. Warren, what's happened uh, in your business life or your professional life since you've been enjoying the clarity and the focus and the energy and the strategy from being alcohol free? Um, both businesses that I'm involved in um are just so busy um I, I, I tell you how I felt I felt like before I still had a business that was running or two you know I was involved in two businesses but um it was almost like um a radio station you, you know if you have a, the old-fashioned radio stations that you had and you had to tune them in it was as if I was running a business with the channel slightly mistuned so, so the signal that I was sending out or the signal that was coming back from my clients was distorted. And as soon as I got the clarity of alcohol out of my system, I just tuned the station in. So now communication-wise, whether it's on the telephone, face-to-face -face, or over Zoom, um, is much clearer. And, and what I'm finding is, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm sitting down this evening and people enroll on our courses. And I've just got like, you know, uh, delegates in, enrolling, you know, over the weekend, during the during overnight, you know, and it's as if I've tuned in to a different level, you know, like a, a wavelength. Sounds that's wonderful. The best, way, the best way to, the only way I can describe it is that, that I, was, I, I wasn't quite on it before. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, and Katty, how do you feel now that Warren's been consistently alcohol free? It's very, very good. Very, very good. Because like I said, I can see him like he is himself and he's great. <laughs> he's really, really good. It's, uh, I don't think there's many, many much words to say. Just, uh, just seeing like he uh, gets up in the morning and like a cell full of beans and it's just ready to go and being happy and working. And I know sometimes he's got to stay away, uh, like he's been away a couple of nights now. But uh, the business with, um, with his mate, Ted, he's just growing. And he's happy because he's enjoying what he's doing. Uh, and uh, what else do you want in life? He's good, very good, very yeah, happy. definitely. We get excited about yeah. which flavor of water we're buying this <laughs> evening. <laughs> and ice creams. I love ice creams. <laughs> You're going to have to do a Project 90 No Ice Cream program soon. <laughs> well, Warren and Caddy, thank you so much for opening up and uh, allowing us into your lives uh, for a few, few minutes here. Uh, I so appreciate you. Uh, being vulnerable enough to share your story in the, in the hope that it will inspire others. Uh, and I want to just acknowledge both of you uh, as well. Katty, congratulations on almost a year alcohol free so far. Uh, and Warren, congratulations on 115 days alcohol free as we're recording this, but I'm sure it will be considerably longer, um, you know, yeah. as we catch up, as we go along. Is that the plan now, uh, Katty and Warren? in terms of your relationship with alcohol? Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. We're, there's no sign of us, you know, wanting to go back down that no. that kind of dark road, of, you know, we were going down. Um, but, yeah, no, we, we're, we're on track, and uh, I reset for another 90 days. So, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I, I kind of, because I'd already done it once, mm -hmm. I thought, well, it makes sense to go, in a, you know, another 90 days and, and I'd obviously head towards a year like Katty. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, congratulations 
Warren and Katty, and thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate it. No problem, James. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.